Good morning. Today is the 4th of Kislev, the 17th of November. We are at the 6th and last reading for th uh, for this week. Uh, we usually don't do the 7th, though there was something we could have said about that. And we're going to wrap up the whole story with the blessings. And these blessings, we said, are very powerful. And they are connecting the heavens and the earth or giving uh, the power to bring realization, consciousness of God to the world. And Isaac feels, and this is his proclivity, is that things should be done with a lot of might. They should be um, almost like a uh, knockout, a knockout blow to reality. One way of explaining this is that when Isaac looks at reality, he doesn't even see it. There are people like this. They don't see it. What do they see? So in Isaac's case, he sees that God brought reality into existence, and so all he sees is godliness. That's actually scary when you think about someone who's not Isaac seeing the world that way. Because if a person is ignoring reality, uh, he doesn't see reality. Well, if he's a Buddhist, maybe that's okay. But when you think about a Muslim, and you think about fundamental Islam, so you understand how dangerous a point of view this might be. And so Isaac's understanding is not one that comes and says there is no reality per se, He's just saying everything in reality is actually godliness. And so he's not coming and saying there are things we don't need. Rather, the opposite. If God created it, it's part of what's needed. To say it another way, um, Isaac is about details. He sees all the details. But he sees the details as not separate from their divine purpose. And he sees everything as serving a purpose. And so everything has its place, everything has its time. So Isaac's whole thinking is, all we have to do is, and Esau has this, has this ability, he's, he's the one who has the strength, this might, he carries it. I just have to give him the blessings and he'll carry it from there on. He'll, he'll figure out the plan on how to reveal the godliness in reality. But his wife Rebecca loves Jacob and she says Jacob has to receive the blessings. That's the, that's the nature of that whole act that Jacob has to put on. By the way, there are also those who say that Isaac was convinced by the act because it showed him that his other son Jacob also knows how to act in reality. He's not entirely clueless. He understands how to do things. And he understands that sometimes you have to play a role. And maybe he can play Esau's role when needed. And so, at the end, when in our reading, Esau comes in, and he realizes uh, from Isaac that he already gave the blessings to his brother, he cries out, a terrible cry, and Isaac says, so who is it that took the blessings from me? I blessed him, and he should be blessed. And that is an addition that he didn't need to say. He didn't need to say, he could have stopped, he could have said, like, for Esau's sake, who is this who took your blessings? I blessed him, and stop there. I blessed him, but since it wasn't you, my dear son, I didn't mean it. They're canceled. I take them back. And now I'm going to give them to you. But he doesn't do that. In fact, not only does he not do that, he says, I blessed him. He should be blessed. He sees the wisdom of his wife's judgment. And the wisdom is that perhaps even by regarding himself, that when you try to do stuff in haste, you try to do things by a knockout blow, exactly like what Isaac did here, it doesn't work so well. It backfires on you. 
you might not have judged properly. Even Isaac could be fooled. So if Isaac can be fooled, all the more so Esau. All the more so that the direction of trying to plow into reality and to shake it up and to make sure that everything is the way you want it, that doesn't work. It didn't work for Isaac. And Isaac had good judgment. How is it going to work for Esau who doesn't have very good judgment? It may lead to the destruction of the world instead of being something that fixes the world. And he realizes this. The moment that he realizes this, he says, I actually put the blessings where they really belong. Or as we called it here, it has to be Jacob. I called it like that because um, before the 2020 election, there was an issue of The Economist that tried to compare Trump and Biden. And the title of the whole issue was Why It Has to Be Biden. (laughs) So here too, why it has to be Jacob. In the end, the way that Jacob proposes to change the world is what we call, uh, later in the Bible, this is called the waters of the Shiloach that move slowly. Or there's another statement that quiet waters penetrate deeply. Anyone who has a mystical bent to them actually understands this very well, that anything that you try to achieve uh, in a knockout blow, in in some, some callous, quick way, in the end usually backfires. It doesn't work. Uh, because changes take time. And why do they take time? Because of, and this is Jacob's great, uh, 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 great, um, call it his, his sensitivity. In next week's Parsha, when he's going to meet Esav, when he comes back from his 20 years in Haran, Esav is going to propose that they join forces. And Jacob says no. Why? I will walk slowly because of the work I have and because of the young children. Jacob knows that changes take time and they require the quiet mind of an educator. They require somebody who is willing to work with children, who's willing to work with young people, who's not just Uh, going to take uh, the 400 adults that Esau had and come in with all his force and say this is this is where I am it's a person who understands that we're cultivating things for generations truth is we're already at the end we've cultivated it started in the time of Jacob but it takes time and Jacob's name itself I don't remember that we've talked about this is composed of the letters Yud the first letter is a Yud, and the next three letters are Heel, Akiv, Yaakov. What does that mean? The Yud represents the world of emanation. In, like in God's name, Yud Kei Vav Kei, the Tetragrammaton, the first letter is the wor- world of emanation. It also represents godliness, in the sense of contraction, of God concealing himself in this world. And so this is the highest form, the, the Yud, the tip of the Yud, the highest reaches of spirituality, the highest reaches of godliness. And Jacob, in his sensitivity, he's able to bring it down to the heel, all the way down to the heel. He's able to connect the heavens and the earth together. But to do that takes a great deal of free will. It requires a great deal of teaching people to be accountable, to be responsible for themselves. Like we've been talking in the last uh, few weeks, to have moral judgment, to be able to tell the difference between right and wrong, to be able to tell the difference between good and evil. That is really the only recipe that will work. And so Rebecca's program, it's interesting that it comes from Rebecca because she's seen what happens in a household that's governed by uh, people with might, her brother and her father. And she knows that really the only way 
to do things is by taking time, by appealing to the sense of and the sen sensitivity to free will. And that needs to be taken into account, that needs to be worked on. And very interestingly, a few generations later, the person who's considered to be the greatest reincarnation of Jacob is Rabbi Akiva. And he's the one who sets forth, we don't have time to talk about right now, but the, but the, but the basic uh, Talmudic statement of free will. And it says, Akol tzafui v'rashut netuna. Everything is foreseen, but liberty is given. Liberty in the sense that every person can choose. How can, how can this even be? How can this work? The answer is, and we're getting into something that actually belongs to last week. We didn't have time to talk about it. I'll just spend a minute on it. We're used to thinking about the world as starting from general principles and then leading to detailed action. Let's give an example. We think that the world was started by, even if we think scientifically, by some laws of nature. For instance, um, let's take um, uh, gravity. So gravity is a general law, and from gravity come many, many of the interactions in our world. Another example, there's the law, or not exactly law, but electromagnetism is a force. It has the four laws uh, that govern it. And all of, about 99% of the interactions in our world are, are limited by what electromagnetism allows us to do. And so then we usually think that God set up a general network, a general rule or law, and we come and we apply it in certain ways. In Chassidus, there's, a, there's an, an, an attempt to explain exactly the opposite. That what God foresaw was the actions, not the rules. Very important. It's called Sof Maaseh Machshavat Chila. The end of action is in thought. In other words, when God calculated what should be in this world, He looked at the actions that He would like people to come to. And then He set up a system of rules that would allow those actions to occur. And it could be very specific. Hakol Tzafui, says Rabbi Akiva, everything is foreseen. Every single action is foreseen as a necessary action to bring us to redemption. But, liberty is given, meaning the rules are set up in such a way that we have to choose to perform these actions. These actions are foreseen, they're part of the program, they're part of the plan. But it's up to the human being to use his free will, his freedom, his liberty, to choose those actions, to choose those acts of loving kindness, those acts of goodness, those acts of moral conduct, in order to bring the world to where it needs to be. And so this is a completely different uh, approach to reality. Rabbi Akiva was the one who stated this. And he's considered, his name is almost the same as Yaakov. It's just an Aleph added at the very end. It was the same letters. So Yaakov's name, Jacob's name, actually means the, the predominance of the heel there, rather than the Yud. Uh, three of the letters are related to the heel, only one is related to God. Is that, in the end, it's about action. And what Jacob sees is, I have to convince the world to act properly, but the way to do this is through giving liberty. The way to do this is through giving people the choice. And only then, when they choose it themselves, will it stick. Otherwise, a knockout punch to the world will only be met by retaliation. And nobody will change and nothing will really matter anymore. You won't be able to achieve your goals. The only way to achieve the proper and good goals and the good conduct that's necessary for this world is to do it through free will. 
is to do it through impressing upon people the importance of these actions and why they should exercise their liber liberty to act that way. So with that, we end this parsha Toldot, and God willing, hope to meet you on Sunday at 6 15, uh, sorry, 10, 10, 8 15 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, uh, what does it come out? 11 15 uh, Eastern time and 6 15 in Israel. Shabbat Rabbi, Shalom. I have to ask you a question. Yes. I know I, but this is really important. Go ahead. What you just said is that, wow, like the Rabbi Akiva was that this is an action oriented creation, not a. Is it, would it be accurate to say what's predestined about people think about destiny is that what's predestined is that these are the actions that will create right. Right. or that are now you can choose right either you're going to be part of the choose. program or not yes what's predestined is that the actions that are necessary to bring redemption right whether you take those or not is up to you so right. it's not like so we have a very wrong understanding of predestination right right right, right, right. Where can I read more about what you just described? So what it's I... it's actually a, an essay from the Alter Rebbe, and it's uh, I, I was going to actually teach it this week in English. They had a, another class just to teach it by myself, to myself. I didn't have time. I'll try to do it next week. Uh, it has a lot of there, it has a lot of uh, parallels in many places in, uh, in in Jewish thought and 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 not just in Jewish thought in general. And it's a it's a very different picture of reality. That essay? Is that in English? I, I haven't seen it, but I'll check. I'll check if somebody translated it. It's not very long. I was going to translate it myself, but uh, I didn't have time this week. Maybe maybe next week. But I'll keep it in mind because I really want to teach this essay. It's very powerful. That should be another. That should be another lecture for your next trip to LA. <laughs> Okay. Rabbi, you said, you said the thought comes from the thought comes from the actions. That actions come before. That was all. All the thought was again in 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 God's in God's reckoning, the action was was the was the uh, goal, and the thought about that action led to certain rules of reality being built, so that reality would allow us to conduct those actions to perform those actions. The first thing he thought about was the actions, not the rules. Um, and that is a different type of understanding of freedom. Uh, freedom, usually, in, uh, when you talk about it in the Western tradition, means that it's completely open-ended. There is You can do anything you want. Here the idea is that you can do anything you want, maybe, or maybe not, but if you want to advance the world, if you want to move the world forward, there are certain actions that are part of that program. And so um, the Torah gives you uh, a, a general goal to pursue so that you can become part of that. Uh, anyone who uh, d decides not to can decide not to. But then they're just missing out on being part. And, and I believe uh, we've spoken about this. I think that the most important thing for a human being in terms of meaning um, is to be part of something greater than th than ourselves. We don't want to limit ourselves to just our passing existence. We would like to take part in something that's much greater than us. And uh, and I think that, that, uh, that this is one of the ways of uh, achieving that. Shabbat shalom to everyone. I have to stop. Um, Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Bye-bye.